How often should a manager meet with employees? In this video, I'm going to give you the tools where you can take your style of management from classical to lean with this one trick. So would you like to know how to manage in a lean way? And would you like to know some tips and tricks that you can implement tomorrow? If so, if you're excited, this video is for you. Okay, so I'm super excited to share this with you. There's a book called The Triumph of Classical Management Over Lean Management. And essentially, what it talks about is that when companies have a leadership team and they control the money and they control the influence, they control the systems, they control all the decisions, they pull all the levers, and this group is disconnected from the people in the field, disconnected from their employees, disconnected from what's actually happening in the business, then that social group will then start to pull levers, spend money, and make decisions that benefit that social group only. And it will protect that siloed social group. And so that's when you get classical management leaders leading through a committee in their ivory tower with disconnected solutions that don't actually make any difference on the front lines, right? That's when you get people that do not understand what it's like to be a frontline worker. That's when you're not really solving problems boots on the ground. That's called classical management when we have a disconnect, right? And so lean management is when this social group, this leadership team who pulls the levers, has the money, can make the decisions, designs the systems, when you can get them closer to the boots on the ground workers, the women and men doing the work, and there's a feedback loop of this is what we need, Okay, let's make a decision, spend money or design a system to help it. This is what we need. That feedback loop narrows, right? And you're able to get proximity, you're able to get connection, and you're able to get real solutions that make a difference for the bottom line of the organization. That is when you are running or you're about to or you have the opportunity to run a lean organization. So this pattern comes from that book, it comes from other lean resources like the Toyota Way, uh, This Is Lean, works by W. Edwards Deming. All of them talk about this need for proximity, this need to get leaders closer to the workers' boots on the ground. So I'm probably leading the witness, you probably know what I'm about to say. How often should managers visit their workers? As often as feasible. And actually, to get the information for these videos, I go tour projects. I, I visit and work with workers and foremen and construction managers to get this feedback, to ask what they need, to learn these outlines, to experiment with this content. That's why I'm so passionate about you liking and subscribing to the video channel because this is a part of that effort of providing that connection, solutions, and communicating in both directions of what we need to make our projects more remarkable. So please, please, please like and subscribe on these videos if you wanna stay with us. So like I said, a manager should meet with their employees as often as possible. Remember this, remember this. You do not in construction build buildings. You build people who build buildings, okay? And there's a difference between management and leadership. Now I believe in both, right? You've heard me say before, LMA, which I got from Gino Wickman, which I actually heard from Lauren Atwell, but it's a part of the entrepreneurial operating system. And the concept of this, when you provide leadership plus management, that's when you're able to hold people accountable. So L plus M allows you to or equals A, your ability to hold people accountable. So managers, you are managers, you do manage processes, you do manage systems, you do manage policies, and you do manage behaviors, and you do manage culture. But you're also a leader, which means you set an example, you provide motivation, right? You inspire people, you set a clear vision. So it's always leadership and management together, right? And so leadership is when you provide that motivation, that vision, which means that you meet with the people because the people then do the things. It's not just about managing things, it's both. So here are some suggestions in each of the most common environments as a manager where you can meet with your people and you can do it starting tomorrow. 
So there's three main environments or three main groups where you can go do some one-on-one -on -one connection and start your lean management efforts. So I'll start first with your management staff. Here are some tips and tricks that you can implement tomorrow, like I said. Number one, you can meet with your direct reports in meetings. You can meet with them one-on-one, -on -one. you can hang out at their desk, you can visit them at the water cooler, you can take them out to lunch, but making sure that you're visiting with them and finding those one-on-one -on -one opportunities is absolutely crucial. When you craft your day, once you do your morning routine and you're actually time blocking your day, I highly recommend that you have a trigger or a reminder to meet with the people on your team throughout the month so that you can have that proximity. Number two, spend time with your team as a whole, at least every quarter, if every month if possible, right? You can do this by taking them out to lunch, you can go out and do top golf, you can go do a little racing event, uh, you can sit outside and like do a little bit of a barbecue. These things are not wasted time. When people say, oh, that's a waste of time, this tomb building stuff is a waste of time. Uh, no, it's not, because you hear things. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and give you the reveal right now. One of the best bits of advice that I received from a general superintendent when I was becoming a general superintendent, he said, go visit the jobs. Even if you don't do anything, sit there, sit in the office, be around them, hear their conversations, understand what they're going through, feel the culture, feel the morale, and they will see you there, see that you care, talk to you most of the time if they need to, and you'll be connected to the job. You'll have a better feel for how you can support them and how you can act in your role to support and benefit the team. I thought that suggestion was amazing. So every quarter minimum, every month, ideally take the whole team out and be in proximity and do something with them and keep your ears attuned to what they're saying and get a feeling for the morale and get a sense for what they need. Number three, and this is huge, participate in team meetings. If I was a project director or a project executive or a project manager, I would make sure that I was in those team meetings at least three out of the four meetings in a month and really be a part of that team meeting build that culture, build that team, connect, get the data, and make sure that I am getting that feedback and I'm addressing their roadblocks, helping them optimize their constraints and solve big problems, which is a part of my role. And I would like to ask you, what would you add? What are some techniques that you can implement on your project in addition to those three? I would challenge you to write it down, schedule it, and do it starting tomorrow. The other social group that you'll wanna connect with are the foreman and the workers. And this might seem silly if you're a manager, but uh, they're a part of your team too. And so there's a way to connect with this group. Here are some tips and tricks. Number one, walk the job. I love, love, love when project managers get out with their full PPE and walk the job, watch, ask questions, get connected because they're not just managing paperwork, they're not just managing finances or the owner of the team, they're managing the job. That's the product, we can't ignore the product. So when the project manager walks the job, that's huge and that will shorten that feedback loop and the manager will see what's going on on his or her project. The key to doing these job walks as you're doing it is to go talk to some workers, talk to some foremen, shake some people's hands, pick up some trash, go be a part of some of the things that are happening, go sit down with the workers as they're having lunch. You'll get to where they are and if you really listen, you'll able to solve problems that will support them in the end. Number two, be a part of the huddle system infrequently. Not all the time, but attend a morning worker huddle. Attend one of the crew's crew preparation huddles. Be a part of the foreman daily huddle or the trade partner weekly tactical. Get into those meetings, see how those meetings are progressing. You'll be able to again gauge the morale, see how they're interacting, see the condition of the job, and see if any coaching or support needed from you. And three, when the superintendent and the other field staff are doing things like barbecues or little award ceremonies or other things like that, go be a part of those. Show up, talk to the craft, tell them how much it means to you. Oh, I can't effectively tell you how much it means to workers and foremen that the owner of the job, the project manager, the directors, the executives come out and say, hey, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. You will get more trust and goodwill from that group than almost anything else you can do. And once you have that, you'll again shorten that feedback loop and start hearing things and learning things that will allow you to better support the project. And so it really comes down to connection. 
Just like when we connect on these videos and we uh, do comments back and forth and have a dialogue, that's human connection. It's that simple. That kind of human connection with people on the management staff or your foreman and workers can be absolutely huge and will allow you to manage in a lean way. I wanna give you a couple of tips as we close. Number one, as you're doing these and you're implementing these tips and tricks, really get to know people. Number two, do something nice. There's nothing wrong with bringing donuts or bringing a gift, or bringing some swag, or buying lunch, or taking a crew out to the casino to get crab legs, or whatever the case may be. Always consider doing nice things for your people. Number three, do a spotlight for your employees. Shout them out. Share information throughout the business unit, right? Take a picture of them. Post something on social media. Do a tour. Brag about them. It will do so much to gain that goodwill and create those communication channels for your people. Number four, you can also gather feedback with surveys. When you're in that barbecue or you're in that team meeting or you're in those huddles, you're in that trade partner meeting, you can actually get some data and collect it in a more formal way so that you can make decisions and have those shorter feedback loops. And number five, do scheduled walks with your team and connect intentionally with your foreman, not just random, but do it intentionally. I recommend doing that once a month. You will get more information from those job walks, digging in and asking questions and touring the project than almost anything else you can do. And so the answer to the question, how often should a manager meet with their employees? As often as possible so that you can lead in a lean way. And in the description below, if you want more information about this, I'm gonna link you to the books, How Google Works and The Triumph of Classical Management Over Lean Management. If you want to learn more about this, these are two amazing books. We're gonna link you to them in the description below. I hope you love them. On we go.